Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks again for watching. I am excited to do this video because it's been pretty much all I have been thinking about in the like makeup sphere um, all summer and probably beyond that. And this is kind of like my roundup. Now that we're ending the summer, <laughs> perfect timing, right Dana? No. But truly, this video is, as you can tell from the title, all about tinted SPF sunscreens that are mineral based. With that said, you should remember sunscreen is not just something you wear in the summertime. We should all be wearing it every single day without fail. Even if you're not wearing it because you worry about wrinkles or fine lines or melasmas, you should just be wearing it because skin cancer and that does affect pretty much everyone. So you can get it regardless of your skin tone. My PSA out of the way. <laughs> um, I know I haven't filmed in a while, so I am sorry about that and hopefully this will make up for it because this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to talk about and I have a lot here. Um, so yeah, let's just get going and don't forget to subscribe below and give this video a like if you do enjoy it. Thanks so much, so let's go. So my skin, if you don't know, historically I've had dry skin. I don't know why I'm using my hands to express that, but I am. <laughs> So there are two types of sunscreens out there. There are chemical based ones and mineral based. When you hear chemical sunscreen, it shouldn't necessarily scare you. I think chemical is the wrong word um, because in a mineral sunscreen, you have chemicals as well. Everything is chemical. <laughs> um, so the main thing that I keep in mind when I think about these is we, with mineral-based sunscreens, you pretty much see titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Those are the two main chemicals that you're going to find. And they are, so typically the higher the percentage of either of those two things, the better. But I do want to caution you against just thinking like it has to be 20%, which is kind of like the recommended amount like for really really great protection for UVA and UVB. It, it doesn't all, it's not always the case. You can find some that have about like 14% and work beautifully. It's just the formulation is different and that is actually important. So keep that in mind. Now if you do see ones that are like 1%, 2%, 3% and those are like the main two ingredients or both at that amount, I would question it. Um, I loved and I used the Kula Mineral Matte sunscreen for years and years and years and then recently I realized that the percentages were so low and I was kind of frustrated in that, I mean, I, I was getting sun protection, but I don't think it was really doing the job that I wanted it to do. So I've no longer been using that. I actually took that video down because I don't want to kind of like spread misinformation. So we learn, we grow. Come on. So when it comes to a chemical sunscreen, you're probably going to see kind of the main um, active ingredients being oxybenzone, avobenzone, octosalate, homosalate, and octinate octinazate. Whew. I don't know how I got through those. I had to stop and like read it beforehand, but whatever. So some of the the more common ones like avobenzone and oxybenzone, um, a lot of people consider them not to be super safe for the reefs and they actually end up bleaching them. So they aren't typically um, what's considered clean beauty just because they are kind of bad for the environment. I would say, I mean, obviously there are tons and tons of differences between chemical and mineral sunscreen, but those are kind of the ones that I I like to think about. Um, I think it's a little easier to break it down into like those active ingredients. And then um, if you get interested in sunscreen, you can go like take a deeper dive. Okay, so we're gonna jump in. I'm gonna go in order of my least favorite to my favorite. So starting with number seven, I have the Sun Bum Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen and it is a 30 SPF. It ranges I think from maybe 12 or so dollars to about 15 and a half. I got mine at Ulta. Um, I don't remember what the price was because truth be told I returned it. The SPF is 30 and while that is pretty much your standard level like you should pretty much just stay at 30 or higher. Um, the active ingredients were, let me check. 3.2% titanium dioxide and 1.8% zinc oxide. Those numbers were too low for me. So as I said before, I've learned more recently that your active ingredients really should be higher. A lot of people say 20% is kind of the mark that you want to reach. You don't always have to get that, but having these two at 5%, that doesn't cut it for me. 
I also didn't really like it. Um, it made my, it, it had a bit more of a white cast than I preferred. I have kind of a medium skin tone, especially in the summer, and I definitely have warm undertones. So for me, it didn't do the point of what a tinted sunscreen did. I still had to put bronze around my face. I had to put other things on my face. So it was just a hard pass for me. I know a lot of people love it. I don't have the bottle because like I said, I returned it. As far as the formula though, it was, I would say, very comparable to Kula. It had the matte texture and it was nice. If you like the Kula one, you would like this. If you have a lighter skin tone, you would like it. If you have anything medium to dark, probably not gonna like it. The next one that I have is the Badger. This is the Broad Spectrum Untinted Tinted Mineral Sunscreen Cream. It's SPF 30, so this is the tone. This one also is $15.99. I think I got this one on Amazon. You can get it a few places. You can get it on the Badger website as well. Um, it comes in 2.9 fluid ounces. I forgot to say, the Sunbum, Sunbum one came in 1.7 fluid ounces, but before with the Sunbum one, you had about 5% of active ingredients. This one has 18.75, which is awesome. Now this one has every seal of like vegan, cruelty-free, um, EWG approved, everything you can imagine. Let's see on here. Water resistance, non-GMO, non-nano, non-comedogenic, and it goes on and on and on. If you go to their website, you'll see. So I turned down the lights in here um, just to show you that it does, for me, on my tone, still leave a little bit of a white cast. Um, that was after rubbing it in for what I feel like is a pretty substantial amount of time. So if you can see, my body is quite a bit darker, and now I have a little bit of a white cast left on my face. So that is why it is number six for me. Um, it's just not the right tone. I could probably wear this just fine in the winter, but this does kind of not really suit what I want. Next up, now the next two are kind of a tie, so I'm not gonna really go in order. I don't hate either. Now I pretty much have like the two that I'm not ever gonna use out of the way. So the next one we have, I'm just gonna stick with the same brand, sorry Badger, but this one is the Damascus Rose. Comes out a lot runnier. As you can see, this one is not as creamy and this is its swatch. So this one retails for $19.99. It is 1.6 fluid ounces, 20 S 25 SPF with a 14% zinc oxide. So I do have this one a little bit lower just because it's only 25 SPF and 14% zinc oxide, which is not a terrible percentage. But again, when you have all these other ones that are gonna be even better, it's just kind of like, mm, I don't need that. I can have a higher percentage for comparable price. There is a lot of skincare in this. It, if you look at the ingredient list, you will just see oil after oil. So this one is definitely chock full of good skincare ingredients. It also has a scent to it. I think it's lovely. It's rose, hence the name Damascus Rose. But if you do not like scents on your face, if you're very sensitive to that, then obviously this is probably not the one for you. It spreads absolutely wonderful. I would say comparable to my number one choice on here, which I'll get to. And it does have a little bit of a lighter tint, again, kind of the same with the first Badger one. So if you have medium to darker skin tones, it may not work for you. So I've turned down the lights again, just so you can see kind of in more natural lighting. Um, you can tell that there's definitely still a little bit of white cast, especially compared to my shoulder. So again, that is why this one is lower for me. And it does rub in really smoothly, but you do get to a point where it's kind of like you can't rub anymore. So that's when I consider it rubbed in. It's really kind of dried down. Next on the list is this really fun one by Raw Elements. They are one of the most environmentally friendly groups out there. So if that is important to you, which hopefully it should be one day to everyone, that's great. This is a tin can. I think it's super, super, super convenient. I throw it in my purse all the time. So it is organic. It is reef safe and it is plastic free. So those are some of the big claims for it. Once you screw it off, you can see it's kind of a, a hard putty in there. All you have to do is put your finger in and then dab it on your face. This retails for $17.99. It comes in 1.8 ounces and it is a 30 SPF. This one is the highest zinc oxide we have out there. It's 23%. This one is definitely not for oily skin. 
it has a lot of oils and some butters in it because of the oils and butters in the formula it's definitely not suitable for oily skin i have normal to dry skin and i find that this one is quickly rubs off if i don't set it with something it also has the darkest tone of all of the ones that i have they've come out with a newer one which has what they say is a lighter shade i will be showing you that in a second but this one definitely if you are light fair skinned this is not going to be your cup of tea you could maybe use it as bronzer but i highly doubt that so as you can tell i have no white cast with this one i think it has the best skin tone for me in the middle of the summer this is kind of my go-to but like i said it's not for oily skin so if you do have oily skin i don't know if this would work even for me i find that it doesn't ever dry down which is kind of a problem i don't I don't love the fact that if I touch my face, I just, it'll be under my nails, it's everywhere, it, it never sets down. It's just all those butters in it. If you know anything about formulating, butters are notoriously hard to soak into the skin. They just are a little bit too big. So that's that. I love it. I think it's great. I use it as a touch up if I'm, you know, out and about and I don't want to bring a bottle. I think this is great for that. Also, it does have a smell. Both of these raw elements are, they use cacao, so that smells pretty strongly. Um, it's a natural scent. It's not artificial. Okay, so we've gotten into the top three. Like I said before, this one um, and some of the Badger ones I do like, and I, I use this all the time. It's in my purse daily, but the top three that I'm going to be listing are the ones that I go to. I reach for every single day, but let's get into it the next one is the raw elements this is tinted daily facial moisturizer okay so this has a pump it is also non-plastic which is great and like i said i think it's 30 spf the product is a bit thick so you gotta kind of squeeze down pretty hard very similar to the other one so this one retails for 18.99 it's a dollar more than the tin version it comes in 1.8 ounces, which is the same as the other Raw Elements one, and it is also 30 SPF. So this one has 20% zinc oxide as the active ingredient, whereas the tin version had 23% zinc oxide. This one has similar skin care properties to the first, which Raw Elements both have lots of oils, um, they have lots of really great extracts as well. And they're all pretty much organic. I think it's 100% organic. I think of this one as a bit of a, more of a moisturizer because as opposed to the one, the version in the tin, this one does set down a little, not set down, but sink in a bit more than the tin version. So I can wear it a little bit more um, conveniently and not feel like I have to powder my face. I do definitely think it has a bit of a glow, kind of a lot of a glow actually. Um, it's it's not going to be matte by any means. So if you do have oilier skin, you have to consider that and keep it in mind. These don't set down as great as some of the others. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Wow! And the next one we have is the Australian Gold. This is Mineral Lotion Non-Greasy. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read it all. This has 50 SPF. This one is, I think, my only matte one. So as I said before, I used to use the Kula one. I also used to use the Supergroup one. Those are both matte versions and I did love, love, love them, but they did not have the highest percentage. And I think that is kind of a common theme because this one has 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc. So here is it swatched on the back of my hand. This one is the cheapest one out there. This is $8.99 and you can get it pretty much everywhere. I think Target, Walmart, Ulta, um, you probably can even get it in drugstores. So it's going to be the most convenient one if you forget your sunscreen and obviously like you're at the beach and there's no Sephora. I would pop in somewhere and this would be the one that I would grab. Like I said before, 50 SPF with 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc oxide and a matte formula. It does have a lighter tone. So for me in the dead of the summer, it's not going to be the one that I reach for the most often. So this is in natural lighting. It does have a little bit of a white cast if you can tell, but when I look in the mirror, I don't see any. I would go out with this on my face for sure. I would say that this one and my number one choice are really great as makeup primers. I don't really wear 
foundation anymore. I just wear sunscreen. And But if you do, I would say that this one, especially for um, more oily skin since it is matte, this would be great as well as my next. Oh, we are there. We're at number one. This should go as no surprise if you've ever watched any of my other videos. I will link, I will link one above. This one is the Drunk Elephant Umbra Tint. I love, love, love this stuff. This bottle is almost empty. And yes, it is the, the love of my life. I can wear this under foundation if I do so choose. I can wear it alone. I can wear it in any setting. I would say that this one is going to be the best for all around skin. If you have super oily skin, this could be a base if you want to have like a little bit of a more glowy, not matte look. Um, and if you have dry skin, absolutely. It's just, just stunning. Just chef's kiss. So from the Drunk Elephant, it is the most expensive one. It's definitely a prestige brand. It is $36, but it does come in two ounces. It is like most of the others, 30 SPF, and it has 20% zinc oxide, which is just wonderful, especially however they made this formula. Having 20% zinc oxide, I don't know how they did it. Now, the two cons that I would say for this is if you put too much on in one application, or even if you don't let it really set down, it can pill, and it can pill alone, it can pill under makeup. So you just have to be a bit more cautious about how much you're putting on. The other thing, it can be a bit greasy in warmer weather or on oilier skin. So keep that in mind. But for me, and I know a lot of people out there, this stuff is just the holy grail. So here it is with the lights turned down and you can see again, there's just absolutely no white cast. For so guys, that's my rundown. Um, I feel like my choices kind of speak for themselves when you see what they look like on my face. But take into consideration your own skin tone, your skin type, you know, how you're gonna wear it. Are you gonna wear it alone like I do? Or are you gonna wear it as a primer under your foundation? These are all important to consider. Um, also, start looking at the back and see what percentages they are. For me, 12-ish is about the lowest I'll go. Sometimes 10, I don't know. But other than that, I go up. If it's below that, I just know that I can find better ones out there with higher percentages. Drunk Elephant, case in point. Um, so yeah, just kind of keep your eye on that. I think it's really an important thing that we keep in mind. I think it's better for my skin personally. And I also really think that if I'm gonna be a conscious kind of citizen of this planet, that I should do my best to avoid contaminating the oceans and the reefs and keeping everything a little bit cleaner, a little safer. So one thing I forgot to mention earlier, I know this is a long video, I'm so sorry. I wanted to get everything in, but you can mix um, mineral sunscreens don't expect that say like for example these are the two that I mix the most often this one has 50 SPF this one has 30 SPF you're not probably gonna get 50 you're probably just going to have to assume you're gonna get the lower SPF but if it's 30 you're pretty much okay anyway so you can mix them though I know some people say you can't I do it all the time my skin is still protected I don't find that I get burned at all so if you did enjoy this video, let me know. I know that this did not cover every mineral tinted sunscreen out there. These are just the ones that I have either found um, or have come recommended to me. So hopefully this helped and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.